Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Heath Bar. I'm your host, Heath Johnson. Each week, I sit down with an artist, creator, or leader who lives or passes through the Black Hills area, kick back a few drinks, and chat about their story. There's some incredible people that surround us, and this is your chance to get to know more about them. From singer-songwriters, film producers, craft brewers, community leaders, and more, the Heath Bar serves up a healthy selection of chats on tap. You can find this and past episodes on iTunes Podcasts and Spotify as well. Just subscribe in the app and you'll know right when your conversation is ready for you. There's also blog posts about the episodes, links to find more info on the guests, merch, and my public schedule as well at heathbaronline.com. And get social with the Heath Bar. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram with at heathbaronline, or you can hunt me down on Twitter with just my name, at heathjohnson. And once again, for all you regulars and those that would like to be a regular here at the Heath Bar, you can donate to this podcast to keep it going uh, at heathbaronline.com. Just go to the Become a Regular page, and you can toss in whatever it is you would like, uh, whether it's a buck, two bucks, whatever it is. Uh, It helps keep this going and getting interesting people on the show for you to enjoy. This week at the Heath Bar is Anna Robbins. We first met several years back after a rained out gig uh, in a coffee shop talking about how disappointed we were. Uh, She overheard me, we got to chatting, and uh, been friends and known each other ever since. She's been writing music for a very long time and I'm a big fan of the stuff that she's been putting out there and will continue to put out, I'm sure. Uh, One of the coolest things that she does, though, in this area is she uh, heads up the Singing Dough Workshop, which is coming up this next month in Rapid City, um, which features the women in music from around this area. If you haven't heard of it, if you weren't at it last year, you definitely missed out. It's a really cool event. Uh, You get to meet some incredible women that have some amazing talent, and she spearheads that, which is super great. I was really glad that she was able to come and we were able to sit down and talk. Uh, She's got a great story. Uh, Her music, if you haven't checked it out, uh, definitely look it up on Facebook, Spotify. She's definitely a local artist that you're going to want to keep paying attention to. So ladies and gentlemen at the Heath Bar, here's Anna Robbins. Welcome to the Heath Bar, where the conversations are always on tap. Weather report: A fog has developed over Utopia. Hide in your houses. Did you see it? I mean, I was in Bell. I've already. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> I pretty much know how this is gonna go. <laughs> Bell gets the fog before Spearfish because uh, I don't know. Maybe we pay higher taxes to avoid it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How that works. You think fog would roll out of the hills into the valley, yeah. right? So well, we should I mean, get it up, first. It's kind of up on a belt's well, kind of yeah, up on a hill. I guess that's true. It was really beautiful, I'll say, this morning okay. driving around. So you guys All are lucky. Right. Well, it finally hit. Way. It finally hit. <laughs> oh man, that's good. Well, cheers. Welcome to the Heath Bar, Anna. Thank you for having I'm me. Glad we finally got to do this. We've been talking about it for months. Yes. Mm. And. Um, it's cool because um, my wife worked evenings like all week, so I've had mm-hmm. tons of free. So I think you're my fourth interview this week. Nice. So I've just been like cranking them out. It's been super cool. Sweet. Getting content for uh, in advance, which is yeah. which is really good to do. But um, so I I love the story of how we met, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, it's it completely by chance. And I'm trying to remember if it was four years ago. Or longer. Oh gosh, I think it was the summer of 2016. Okay. No. No. It no. Was 2015. That. That's right. So yeah, um, almost four years ago. Yeah, we were good. we were gonna play the uh, Black Hills Music Festival. Yep. And, we were uh, the band was... that won the competition to get in. You were? Yeah. Okay. That's how we got up here. Oh, okay. <laughs> was we were we were the. The band comp winners and uh, I didn't know they had a contest for they that. They did, and like you had to get the popular vote kind of thing. So I was super shocked we got. Oh, <laughs> that's right. 
We shared I that thing like crazy. I I contribute our win to my bandmates who had more friends who were active on the internet than I did. <laughs> 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 That's the only way we got it. <laughs> I vaguely remember them doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, long story short, we were supposed to play that. Right. And then it was crappy weather. Yes. I don't know if it was just the crappy weather or if it was, you know, a bad day to pick for a festival. I Hard think to maybe say. A lot of Plus, it was the first year they were going to yep. do it. And anything up here, when you start it off, always starts slow. Mm-hmm. I've never seen anything take off right away. Um, I might have thought of an exception. To that, ooh, what's the exception? Singing dough. Ah, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's... That's a valid point. <laughs> oh man, yeah, but we. Mm-hmm. So I got I got a call. They had to cancel. They said you guys can still come and play if you want, but there's there's no one here. The weather's really bad. Clearly, we didn't sell enough tickets to yeah. be able to pay anyone, and <laughs> they were super apologetic. And I was like, no, nah, it's it's cool. You know, I mean, I only put a band together just for this gig because I didn't I didn't play in a band, you know. And I'm losing friends after this, but thanks. <laughs> like, <"Grr." laughs> but uh yeah, so then we canceled obviously I called everyone and said, hey guys, it's it's done. I even made printed t shirts. Did I tell you that? I do remember you <laughs> said that you had printed stuff just for this show. <laughs> to try and make some extra money in the merch booth and <laughs> I ended up with a bunch of extra t shirts. <laughs> Uh, they said Heath Johnson and the Somethings, because that because we had no name for the band, right. so we just put that it. It wasn't there. that festival specific, was it? No, well, no. Like if the band would have stayed together, I could have used them again. Mm-hmm. But we 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 were. Do only, you still have those? Um, I have like I have one. I think Whitney uses it as a as a pajama shirt, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Guth has one. I think the members of the band all have one, maybe. Okay. Um. And then I gave one to to Dan McGinnis because he thought it was really silly the story, mm-hmm. and I had one left. So I'm like, "Well, here you go, man." And I think he, <laughs> he I think he actively wears it like it's like it's one of his ro- in his rotation, you know. He's like, oh no, this is my Thursday shirt. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, yeah. So then, uh, so then Whitney and I walked into the coffee shop mm-hmm. and Green Bean because we were just like, "Well, might as well since we have nothing to do, let's go get some coffee." And we hung out and. Of course, I was complaining. I was pretty upset and bummed, and and then uh, you guys were all sitting at the table next to us, and yeah. you leaned over. You're like, "Excuse me, <laughs> are you talking about?" And I was like, "Yes." And you're like, "We just got we got kicked out of it too, or whatever." Did you guys end up playing? No, it, we though? played it. That's right. But That's right. They told us that the venue had kind of changed and. That there wasn't really anyone coming. <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. Because we had booked um, a cabin up here, or a couple of cabins up here the night before. Uh. So we're like, well, we might as well do it because we're already up here. Because we weren't from the area. That's right. At the time, we weren't living up here. So Where were you living at? I was living in um, Mission, South Dakota. That's right. And then a few of them were from Nebraska. And a couple of them were from Nebraska. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. So we had traveled already, and we we're like, just, like, just, well, now just what? don't make this like, <laughs> like, oh gosh, the bummers of all trips. And was it, was it that day, or was it the next day that we? Because we ended up playing at Crow Peak. It was, I believe, that night. I think it was the same day. So we played there that early afternoon because they right. still had their he- quote unquote headliner. That's right, yeah. playing. So we was. ducked out as soon as the headliner <laughs> caught on. Later. <laughs> <laughs> and came to Crow Peak and played with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, because I called Crow Peak. I was like, hey, this band's in town. You know, um, things kind of with the festival kind of went south and that, you know, we're they're just kind of looking for, you know, a place to set up and play. And they're mm-hmm. like, yeah, we got nothing going on. So we played and hung out. And uh, yeah, so that's the story of how we met. It was pretty cool. Was, and was, then I moved away not thinking I'd ever be back. Yeah. You moved, wasn't it, was, it was Colorado, wasn't yep, it? I went to Colorado for yeah, a year. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. I, I didn't think I'd ever see you again either. Well, I did come up for a songwriter's round while I was living down there. Um, okay. Because I knew you and saw the call went out and uh, so came up for that. But even at then, I didn't think I was moving back here. 
So it was just like, oh, quick trip to South Dakota to do a songwriter's round and then I'll go back to... That's <laughs> right. Yeah, I remember that now. Man. God, it's, it's crazy when you like when you think back and like how long... Like, that was years ago. Like, it was. I've been doing stuff for years now. It's not just like, hey, you know, I've been playing music for six months or so. It's like, <laughs> no, there's... There's years on the on the notches on the belt, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. That's crazy. Um, but you did you grow up in South Dakota? No, no. no. See, I always think you did. I don't know. No, why I, think that. I just blend in very well. <laughs> <laughs> just clearly South Dakotan, so no one really ever knows. But so so, tell me your story a little bit. Where did you oh grow gosh. up? Oh gosh, you want to hear it? The, okay. the, you, you can do you can do the quick one. The you quick can, one. I was. Born in Indiana, but we were living in Kentucky at the time. And for the first seven years of my life, we moved around almost every year. And then we ended up in Michigan, and I was there for six years. And then we moved to Wisconsin, finished out high school there, and then went to university in uh, Milwaukee. And then after graduating, came out to South Dakota for the first okay. time. <laughs> so, so yeah, I was completely off. I mean, <laughs> some reason I thought you had a childhood in South Dakota, but... Mm-hmm. Um, that's cool. Neither did I. I moved out here in 2008. I was already out of college and an adult. But you were so. from kind of the region, right? I grew up in western Nebraska. Yeah. So like about six hours straight south of here mm-hmm. of, of Spearfish. So, um, but I don't know if you get, have you, you've been out to western Nebraska. Yeah. Like it yeah. doesn't look like South Dakota. No, it's, no, no. It's com- pretty much all of Nebraska kind of looks the same. Yeah, I mean, just, you get up to the northwestern, like the very far northwestern yeah. side. It gets you get a little bit of that Black Hills look, but that's it. The rest of it's flat and yeah. sand hillish. And there's nothing. that one, I think, state park over that way that I always thought was kind of cool. Um, I don't remember. Was it Toadstool? You ever? You never heard of Toadstool? No. Oh, so it's the far western side of Nebraska, and it's. Uh, old lava from when a volcano erupted, what? and it cooled in the form of toadstools. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. I at least that's the story I I remember <laughs> from when I was like eight. I, I could be completely that. off, but I remember I remember going there at least a few times. But oh, that's yeah. cool. I have to check that out. Yeah. Um. So, did you? Uh, what got you into music? Um, I grew up with it. Okay. So my dad's a musician and a songwriter. Oh. Um, and a composer and yeah. Uh he even like kind of wrote a musical using other people's music, but like wrote the story and kind of like, you know, put music to it. Uh and uh so he was kind of my first musical influence and then um I mean, it kind of ran in the family. My grandma was very heavily involved in her church choir and liked having family jams at her house mm-hmm. and i have like uncles and aunts who are pretty musically inclined and my brother's a like professional musician so it kind of runs in the family <laughs> so it's like you didn't really have a choice like no you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> music's gonna be a part of your life <laughs> feels that way sometimes <laughs> like, like the, one, the one sibling oh they don't they don't play music we don't talk about them at thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> they're gone so I do have a sister. <laughs> oh, <laughs> who doesn't? She's. It's not that she's not musically inclined. She does like there is sing a black sheep, and yeah, <laughs> and she like plays ukulele sometimes. She joins in the jams when she can. But she is a very gifted visual artist. I mean, we're all like super artsy. My mom yeah. has like the visual art crafty gene. Okay, so we get that, and then we get music and like writing from my dad, and like yeah. I got you. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I don't know. I love my family to death, but artisticness. Not so much. I don't know. Like, maybe there's secrets they're hiding from me. Like, mm. my dad played guitar when he was younger. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather had a, had a country band in western Nebraska, believe it or not, out in Scotts Bluff, Minotaur area. Um, it was called Bob Hop and the Trailblazers. Mm. Totally just him and two dudes, like, yeah. you know, Hank and Johnny did. This was back in, like, 40s so uh-huh. you know um but other than that uh like my immediate family mm-hmm. i can't I think so of you're the black thing. sheep yeah i'm the one that's like <laughs> oh he's the crazy one out there doing weird stuff and thinking he can make a living <laughs> playing music um but hey i do all right i do okay it, it could be it could be a lot worse it, um, yeah yeah 
<laughs> uh, what what instrument did you start with? Piano. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. I started piano when I was six. Okay. And uh, didn't touch a guitar really until I was like fourteen, and then kind of started really learning when I was sixteen. Um, but I kind of, after like learning four chords, I kind of stopped. I was like, oh. the guitar? Yeah. I was like, that's enough. That's all, that's all you need from four chords and you can just change the capo and you're set. Right? right. Exactly. That's exactly what I did. I would write songs to those four chords only and just switch the capo around. Oh, that's funny. Um, since then I have learned a few more. <laughs> um, not, not a ton more i would not say i'm proficient on guitar i get by yeah and um i actually just finished well by just i mean a few months ago finished um my first like real documentary production yeah i wanted to talk to you about that yeah well i did the soundtrack for it and i like composed a few uh, melodies on guitar, mm-hmm. which was a lot of fun because I do not think of myself as a guitar player, but like that's what the film called for. Yeah, and I wanted to do the music. I wasn't about to let anyone else do the music. Like, so. <laughs> I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> gonna, I'm just gonna come up with something. So that was fun. And if you ask me what the chords were for that, I don't think I could tell you. But <laughs> I just had my fingers in this claw kind of shape, and then they turn into another claw kind of shape, and yeah. It worked. That's a claw chord. <laughs> Have you ever you, seen? You don't play the claw chord? <laughs> Add that to your list. You'll need it. Have you seen Friends? Watch the show Friends at all? Oh, geez. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've seen them years. It's been yeah. years. But... I mean, there's that episode where Phoebe's teaching Joey how to oh, play the guitar. Oh, that. Yep. I remember. And it's always like, this is claw, and this is old woman, and... <laughs> Because she doesn't know the actual. That's that's right. what I need to start doing. Is just naming. <laughs> I just naming call it whatever words. my hand looks like at <laughs> exactly. the time. That's funny. Uh, Video games after twelve hours. That's oh that one. gosh. <laughs> this is called Num Thumb. That's a my uh, my daughter's just got a uh, uh, Nintendo Switch. Oh my my friend just got one. Too. Oh my <laughs> goodness! Is that such a great gaming system? Like I love it. I'm like, wow, I were, but yeah, we were playing it over Christmas break, and I remember going, yep, this is what my thumbs felt like when I was a kid. Like, yeah. I, or- I already hurt. <laughs> so I have to tell you, I had a conversation with someone already about this today. We got into this game that I guess is like sweeping the nation, but Stardew Valley. I haven't even heard of it. Okay, it, you can play it on multiple platforms, but we got it on the Switch, and it is so much fun, and like all it is is just building a farm. Like, you can farm crops. You can raise animals. You can go fishing. You can go, like, in this mine. There's, like, all these different levels. You can go mining. And you, like, build stuff for your farm. It's just creating a successful farm. Just this morning, I got engaged to my Stardew Valley boyfriend. Ooh. Yes. So, wedding in two days. Is it, like, real people? Or is it, like... (laughs) (laughs) Like, there's a user out there. (laughs) There's some guy sitting in California, like, really excited right now. And you're like... Oh, he thinks this is real. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's like different characters. There's there are like speci- um, very uh, uh, what's the word formatted characters in this program, and so you kind of get to choose like who you kind of pursue. Like interesting. Like it tells you who's single and who's not, mm. and. <laughs> You get to kind of pursue. And I didn't even necessarily mean to pursue. I was just like, oh, he's nice to me. I'll keep talking to him. And so and before I knew it, I was engaged. <laughs> before I knew it, I'm engaged. He looks like Fabio. So I consider that like <laughs> <laughs> he lives on the beach and like writes fiction. He wrote a sci-fi novel, for, you know, and dedicated it to me. So I figured that's what And this is a sign. this is a complete like <laughs> game character. Yes. And you know, the really interesting thing about it, it was all designed it and like it was ma- completely made by one guy. Everything from design to coding to story to the to depthness of the characters. Apparently, backstory. music to what like the heck? all one guy. Just from what I it. understand, that's what my boyfriend tells me anyway. <laughs> that's cr- your real boyfriend. <laughs> my real boyfriend, <laughs> not, not Fabio, not Nintendo <laughs> Fabio. <laughs> I mean, I think that's how most guys that look like Fabio end up getting engaged. And he, I w- he was nice to me. I was talking with him. Next thing I knew, we're engaged. <laughs> I don't know if they meet people other than that way. But I'm just, I'm just assuming. Well, I had to. So, like the way the story goes, 
Uh, you like had to get so many hearts before you could like even think about proposing to your significant other. And then you have to wait for when it rains and then go to this one spot where this guy, the, the old mariner is standing in the rain. He's not there when it's sunny, just in the rain. So you had to wait till it rained, which only happened this morning and then get like a mermaid pendant and then take the mermaid pendant. <laughs> I have to like, have I earned your love now, Fabio? <laughs> Okay. It's even complete with like a standing in the rain story. What's the name of this game? Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley. I, I have to try it now. I, I You'll think... get hooked. We bought it over Christmas break. Okay. I've clocked like over 40 hours on this thing. Holy crap. Already. It's like, I've done a week's worth of work into this. Like, oh, I've... no. I haven't <laughs> thought about it that way. Holy oh, God. Cow. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> You know, okay. it's it's funny though because, <laughs> like, they're because we're I mean we're both songwriters mm-hmm. and we've been doing it for a long time, but like there are so many things that are that I'm interested in that have nothing yeah. to do with songwriting. Oh gosh! And yes. before I know it, a week like you said, a week goes a week by goes and by. I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> Do you, so I'm curious, I've been thinking this a lot lately, every time I hear the radio, Mm -hmm. I start feeling guilty, (laughs) cause like, it's like crying in the car, (laughs) no, I'm just like, okay, I know I should be practicing my music, otherwise I'll never end up in a studio like these people, but that's not what I'm doing, I'm I'm in the grocery store, and that's hearing the radio, I'm not practicing like I should be. Oh, absolutely, like I go through, (laughs) so I go through... Like like bouts where it's I can't I don't I don't touch it at all I don't mm-hmm. even think about it at all I just kind of sit on things for a while and then like when I get in that mode mm-hmm. like four days go by and I'm like oh I should have I should have probably eaten <laughs> you know because it's just like I did, like oh I don't don't even think about it you yeah. know but but I haven't had one of those in a while like I think it's oh, just because good. there's so many other things going on right now in my life you know and it's like I I don't have time to. Oh, I see. Go yes. four days without eating. But That's yeah, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> like, oh, especially when you hear certain songs, you're like, that person is on the radio. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> oh my God. I only feel better when I hear classics because it's like, I never would have written one like that anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> do you have, a, do you have a go-to artist that you listen to? Like what, what's some of your influences? Oh gosh. Um, or that you grew up listening to, I guess. And or I okay, so grew up listening to my dad had kind of like two albums he would have kind of playing all the time. I mean, he listened to other stuff too, but mm-hmm. those two seemed to be played the most. And they were Allison Krauss and Union Station. Okay. And the other one was John Hyatt's like Americana album. John Hyatt, mm-hmm. nice, sweet. Yeah, that's cool. So not his like classic rock. It was like when he went folk. Yeah, so it was. I think it's called "Crossing Muddy Waters." Is the and, name and that, so that's kind of what because you would you consider yourself a folk artist? Yeah, Americana folk. Okay, there's all those different categories now. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, you almost have to put all of them on on a string so that people know. Oh well, I like those three out of the five they mentioned. So maybe right, maybe I'll go check them out. I don't know. I mean, but, there's so many different labels. It, <laughs> I feel like I still run into people who are like, I don't know how to describe my music. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like, you know, there's enough labels for all of us now. You can right. just pick one. <laughs> like I play acoustic guitar and I sing some words. I don't, know, I don't know what you call that. But yeah, it's well. And I think part of it, I think part of it is too, like artists by default are creative. Yeah. And so then feeling like you're a part of a mold that's already exists. Yeah. Feels like you're betraying yourself. You know that makes sense, and so you like no, it's n- it's not quite folk. It's it's party folk, or like <laughs> I don't even know if that's probably a thing. I don't know. I'm just making up, you know, things. If now. not, it's becoming a thing. <laughs> what would that even look like? It's party just, folk. It's just a, ba- a just band boom, full of boom, banjos boom, boom, and boom. drums. Yeah, I mean, just thumping bass line. And just enough, just enough baseline, like the house shakes, but then everything else stays the same. Just yep. like we just created a grass. genre. There we go. Boom. Party folk. Party folk. <laughs> Brought to you by Heathen Anna, ladies and gentlemen. 
<laughs> um, so tell me a little bit more about this uh, this documentary, though. That you were so you created yeah. all the music for it, but mm-hmm. you also did the filming. For I did it? Okay. pretty much all the yeah production for it. Um, I have a studio down at Racing Magpie in yeah. Rapid City, and through that, I met another uh, local artist, Dwayne Wilcox, who is um, way more famous than I am. He's like <laughs> nice. like. Legit, like, known in the art world as a very well-known um, ledger artist, Lakota artist. And so we were talking one day about uh, jobs and work, and he knew what I did. And we, and he also is a musician, so we've talked a lot about music. And um, so just kind of talking about the, the – and complaining, I guess, venting about the, the struggle of being a full-time artist or a full-time freelance, you know, mm-hmm. freelancer – He's like, you know, sometimes you just got to, like, make your own work. So the next day I came to him and I was like, have a we make a video of you. <laughs> hey, I have this idea. <laughs> That's great. Um, so we did. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what's it called? It's called um, Hechetu Willow, which is Lakota for That Is All. Okay. And is he is he Lakotan? Yes, he's La- from... Is it Lakotan or Lak- Lakota? It's Lakota, no Lakota. matter. Okay, so it's not like... It- South Dakota or anything no, like that. No, no. Okay. And uh, yeah, he's from Pine Ridge okay. Reservation. And so we went and filmed at his like generation, like generation upon generation homestead. Oh, wow. On the reservation. And uh, got to see like the site of where his like tiny little school building that's no longer there <laughs> was. <laughs> and yeah, it was really cool. Um, and, you know, did a whole interview about, because the, the film itself, focuses on his early life because man when he left the reservation from what i understand he, he went all kinds of places because uh he and his wife were in the military so oh, okay they traveled a lot and so when we we're talking about the premise of this film I was like we need to narrow it down <laughs> yeah this is only like 20 minutes <laughs> before you know it like, wait where was where was i going with this mm-hmm. yeah that i can imagine that would be very difficult especially for him like what parts of my life do i want to share and what do I want to share but have to cut out because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't fit the focus or mm-hmm. something like that. Well, and it made sense to focus on his early life because um, we could do the shooting for that pretty easily. But also it, it, a lot of questions he gets, from what I understand, is about his upbringing and kind of the early influences on his artwork, which is gotcha. what we focused on. So Okay. Plus it leaves room for a... Uh, part two and a part three, right? Make a, make a trilogy. We were talking on the phone the other day, and he's like, "You know, we need to stretch this into like an hour long film." I was like, "No, Dwayne, that's the sequel." <laughs> you <laughs> you just do sequels work on now. Sequel. <laughs> that's what people do. That's how everything works. <laughs> oh man! So was it? Um, was it fun? I guess fun. Obviously, <laughs> it was fun. But do you? Because uh, film is is something that you you've been doing for a while too. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. that's definitely not like, hey, I. I want yeah, to do music for you, but I have this camera, so I'll just film you also. Like, no. you've got a history doing yes. that also. So. Yeah, so I actually went to school, started out as a music major. Okay. Um, but after a year, I was like, oh, no, and changed it to a music minor and did communications instead. Um, and by the and they didn't have some any kind of, like, film track, but I kind of chose classes to kind of, like, help me figure that out. Mm-hmm. So by the end, I kind of had experience in media and... Um, production a little bit okay. and then um i just i kind of worked on different videos um wherever i went uh even spent a summer well not a whole summer a month of a summer at sundance uh lab institute in utah oh wow yeah um i was a driver volunteer <laughs> so i drove uh people from the airports to the resort where everyone was gathering and then like did runs up and down the mountain to get people from their cabins down to like where the workshops and everything were and the whole time you're like i'm doing it i'm making it this is (laughs) okay making it (laughs) so there were a couple of like actors that came through that i was like i totally recognize you really i didn't really meet them personally but like yeah there were a couple yeah. yeah wow and i got to drive this was so unless you're into film scores and co- and composers, you may not know this name, but I got to drive the guy who composed the score to um, uh, Born Identity. Shut up. And Batman. 
Like the Batman Begins trilogy and all no, that? No, the or? night, uh, the night was the Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's a holy <laughs> crap! I drove him. They asked me because they knew I was in. The, like that was one of my areas of like interest was film music. So yeah. they were like, Anna, do you want to go pick up this guy from the airport? I was like, okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> So I didn't really talk to him either. I was, like you know, more lost. the chauffeur. I don't chauffeur. know how to get back. <laughs> you and I have to sit here and talk oh, for six Harry hours. Oh, Harry Williams just suddenly <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> Never made it to Utah. But um, <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> but like as soon as I had dropped him off, I had to go to lunch. And I remember sitting down. I didn't even grab food. I just sat down at a table with other people I knew from from the Institute, other volunteers. And I'm shaking and they're just like, are you okay? And I'm like... This is me starstruck, like <laughs> having driven these famous, successful composers from the airport. Like I'm just, I'll never be one of them. Oh my know? gosh! Yeah, that would. <laughs> these other actors and like even I saw Robert Redford uh, walk through the. Holy crap! The he like walked like ten feet away from me through the resort on one of the days, and that didn't. You know, oh man, that didn't shift me at all. But driving, <laughs> driving the composers, yeah, I kind of lost it. That's cool. <laughs> I um, I used to work at uh, a hotel in Omaha, and uh, it was connected to the Civic Center where they had all their big concerts mm, and shows mm-hmm. and everything like that. And so every now and then they'd have big acts come through and they'd stay. Um, but they always had back entrances and everything. But I always hoped that one day I'd they mm-hmm. they order room service and I'd have to go and take it up to them. And it happened to a few like semi. Like NBA, like Pat oh, yeah. Riley, I got mm-hmm. to meet him and That's everything cool. like that. That was pretty neat. But I, Paul McCartney was coming through once, and I was hoping so bad. <laughs> Dude doesn't order room service, <laughs> not at all. He just he just stayed in his room, and everything was done for him. Which I I guess is what happens <laughs> when you when you get star. to that level. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I did get to meet the Super Nanny. Do you remember that show? I have heard of it. I never um, watched it. Yeah, but. she was like this, I don't know, like if Mary Poppins turned evil or something <laughs> like that. Like, oh my god. So not super good Nanny. No, well, she, that, the, she, so apparently she's like, she comes into like the worst kids and she changes their life in like a week. Like, you bullshit. <laughs> that doesn't happen. But yeah, then you meet her in real life and like, oh, you, you're, you're that way in real life too. Like, you're just not a kind person. Oh, wow. It was rough, but... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's that's as far as I've ever gotten as far as to meeting like someone that a lot of people would know. I mean, there's there's small like red dirt artists and that sure. that I like that I've yeah. met and I'm excited, yeah. you know, excited to meet them, but yeah, but it's a uh, it's something. So when you when you meet people like that, like do you have a list of people like god, if I ever met them, like th- these are the <laughs> questions that I would want to ask like what is it that got you there? What is it that keeps you there? Or do you just kind of, like, that seems weird to... I don't know. I had the chance, actually, to ask one of these composers. Um, I I think his name John Newton Howard. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, he did a workshop yeah, at Sundance him. when I okay. was there. And so he was taking questions after doing this, like, live. Um, he showed us kind of a live version of layering tracks to Unstoppable the movie okay so that was really cool but we got to ask questions afterwards so i did i asked a question (laughs) and that was really cool and i learned that even though you're a composer you don't have to orchestrate everything like he has people to orchestrate the 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 sheet music for him oh he doesn't do that and i thought yes i can totally do that (laughs) sweet She said, find other orchestrators. There's an easier route to go. That's funny. I always worry that if I ever met someone that I was really starstruck with and I'd ask them a question that they would be like, well, that's a dumb question. Oh, God. So I'm like, oh, God. Like, they say never meet your heroes. And I'm like, yep, I'm probably just, it's it's nice as a fantasy. But Aww. you never know. You never know. I mean, if if I ever got the chance to, like, meet, uh, you know, Willie Nelson or something, I, I would totally take it even yeah. if it went south. Like, oh, yeah. He's like, How can you say no to that? Yeah. I mean, even if he was, like, no, nah, man, I don't really like that song. Mm-hmm. You know, not that I would ever get to play a song for him, but this is part of my fantasy that I'm talking yeah. about. So, anyway, <laughs> um, so when did when did you write your first song? <laughs> At what point did you decide, hey, I'm not just gonna 
play music with my family. I'm going to write my own stuff. And Well, that's hard to say. I mean, my parents like to tell people that I would wake, as a baby, would wake up singing random, th- <laughs> like, words. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they knew I was up, because I would be singing in the other room. And um, I have, like, early memories of being, like, six, six or seven singing random words to Did they record those? Stuff. Oh, I don't know. You might I have don't some so. kick ass melodies that got lost <laughs> forever in time. Yeah. You could change the words, but you know, like anyway. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I was kind of as far as like um more uh structurally putting songs together, um was doing that on piano first. So I was coming okay. up with just kind of piano comp- compositions first, but then started coming up with lyrics to piano lines so like the song was written as a piano composition first and then i took the melody from that and added words when i was a teenager and moody and you know how that all got all that goes (laughs) super dark and depressive songs oh the world (laughs) and then eventually once i had four chords down on the guitar (laughs) and wrote my own melodies Oh man, yeah, I don't know anything about being a depressive teenager. I've never experienced that in my life, Anna. What are you talking about? Is there ever an artist that doesn't know what that is? like? I don't know if there is. I think like even the the ones that sell themselves as super happy pop, mm-hmm. like that's that's for a paycheck. There's no way yeah. that they're that happy in real life. Like I've I'm, actually seen articles argue the make the argument that artists are more inclined to have like um depression or just like that kind of phase mm-hmm. in their life or some sort of mental illness that that kind of goes hand in hand with like with that being intense artistic. of being creative and artistic. Mm. Yeah, it's probably just cuz a, a part of your brain snaps. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and you just uh, I mean, I totally I totally believe it. Like yeah. I think of every every artist I've ever known, mm-hmm. like they that I that I appreciate and that I like, like there's you know, you watch the, you know, I'm thinking back like 1990s, like the behind the scenes VH1, oh, gosh, yeah. you know, and and all that type of stuff. Like there was just, there's always a dark, dark side of the history well, is, of it. And, I mean, is there a successful 90s grunge rock band that hasn't lost a band member? Mm, right? <laughs> It's, like, it's almost like you that was that was a requirement. Like, no, we're, we want to be big, so everyone draw straws. <laughs> Short straw dies, and that's how we make. That's how we're going to be big. Like, thanks, oh, man. We'll take sad. care of your family for you. But no, it's that? true. It's, it's true. true. I mean, I was thinking about this today. Actually, I was driving through the canyon, so I had time to look, reflect because I had a break in my in my crazy week. But, um, like, I I've had friends say oh you're happy now you're not writing any music <laughs> oh i uh, yell you get that <laughs> so i think that's part of the reason why i haven't been writing songs lately and i was i was i was i was talking to, to whitney about this and i was like i know i didn't make a mistake mm-hmm. like marrying you and being happy with you because that's clearly not a mistake but yeah i'm wondering if like songwriter he's going dude you screwed up like <laughs> You just missed out on a ton of just songs that you'll never write now because you're yeah. super happy. I'm like, yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, I was thinking about this in the car today. So, like, when if at least for my experience has been, if I'm feeling sad, I feel it. I give it attention, mm-hmm. and that's when songs come out. But when I'm happy, I rarely notice until <laughs> you know, and like spurts will come where like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm happy, I'm doing good, I'm not sad. But you don't like take the time to give it attention. No, because you want to sit it. and enjoy that happiness. You don't want to waste your time doing something else. You're like, I want to be happy right now. And if I sit and think about being happy, then I'm not really enjoying my happiness. And who knows when it's coming back? Right, because I'm right. an artist. It's gonna get dark soon. Right. So <laughs> if I, I don't know if I were to like. I don't know. I feel like the times I've tried to ride a happy and actually were happy in the moment, mm-hmm. it's actually worked out okay. But it just doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Do you have an example of a song that's like a happy song? Yeah. Well, um, kind of. I recently wrote a song called "Home," uh-huh. um, and it's about kind of having moved around a lot, but then finding a place where you feel content and don't okay. want to move away. Uh huh. Um, and that was definitely like an in the moment kind of happy song. Okay. I think. Yeah. I wrote a song uh, for 
a music video Derek did a few months ago, and Eric Domkowski mm-hmm. helped out, did the production for it. Um, and it's like a happy love, we can conquer whatever song. Okay. okay. So it just kind of... So it's possible. It is possible. <laughs> I think you have to like be in the moment, though, and le- like give your yeah. happiness attention. And yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I mean, whenever I think of... Uh, like your songs, the song that always pops in my head first is Driftwood. Mm. And I just, because I, I like, there was a song that I grew up listening to back in the day. Uh, forget the, uh, Craig's Brother was the name of this band. Hmm. And they were super, they never really got super big. Uh, they were big to me because I lived in Western Nebraska and, you know, I had this CD that had a, uh, a skeleton on it. And I'm like, oh, this is cool, you know. And they were a good band, but they had a song in there, um, Talking about floating like driftwood, and it always mm. kind of stuck with me as a mm. kid. So then I hear your song, and it's like whenever someone mentions your name, it's like the first thing I think of is your driftwood tune, mm. which isn't necessarily a happy tune, no. but it's not necessarily a. I don't know. It's not sad. It's just kind of it's a, there. It's a, like an apologetic tune. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I kind of think of okay. it. Okay, it's it. It's a little. Little depressing, but also just kind of like this is me. Yep. <laughs> you know, like this. Is Here I am <laughs> right now, and that came out of uh, the write a song a week, didn't yep. it? So that yep. was one of those. You did a whole, I think, out of that because this was a couple years ago. We yeah. had the challenge to write a, a write a song ago. a week for a whole mm-hmm. year, and I think out of all the artists from around America, like all throughout the states that. Show. In the world, there were a few. Were there some? There were some I international okay. songwriters in that group. I didn't know that. That's mm-hmm. sweet. Um, but I think you're the only one that took those songs and made an album. I don't know about that. Mm, I mean, I haven't. Sure, seen I'll it. claim it, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't have any I mean, evidence it, to back that if, up. <laughs> if uh, if you if there's someone else out there that this would have been 2016 16. Mm-hmm. that did the song a week challenge and you put that to an album, please share. Because yes. I think you're the only one. You're the only one I've seen promoted, anyway. Yeah. And you ca- you named it. Um, well, I just just lost the name of the album. Um, Chronicle. Chronicle. Because of that, right? Yep. It was because it was kind of in a time yep. frame and everything. So. And the the songs are in order of when when they were written. Okay. That, of over that year. Gotcha. Well, except for the intro. The intro was written later on because it encompassed other That's right. songs. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Which is cool. It's cool that you. Uh, they were able to. Have, what was that like? I guess putting in the intro together and like pulling different parts of mm-hmm. other material to like kind of introduce an mm-hmm. album, which is. I mean, people have done it before, mm-hmm. but was what made you decide that? Hey, this is kind of what I want to do, like a preview almost. I just I just thought of the idea, thought, of, hey, why not try it? And it just worked out. I don't. That's cool. <laughs> I don't. That's know. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's nice when things work out. I, I, I do appreciate when that happens. Um, yeah, and so, uh, but aside from songwriting, yes, um, a lot of what you do also is, I mean, you're 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 a big advocate for a lot of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, at least uh, it's it's part of what I n- I know you as. I guess that's fair. I mean, you've that's fair. You you opinionated on a lot of different things, which is oh. good. You know. <laughs> Uh, no, that's 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 really good. You know, I mean, it's there's a lot of people that keep their mouth shut, you know, when they shouldn't. And uh, um, but part of what you do is also, uh, you know, you do a lot for like women in music and promoting mm-hmm. more women being in music and doing music things and mm-hmm. artistic things, I guess, mm-hmm. and everything. And uh, that led you to start singing Dell, mm-hmm. um, which I when I first heard about it, I thought it it was something like that already existed and you were bringing it to South Dakota. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it was, nope, this is a founding (laughs) starting right here in in Rapid City. So uh, walk me through kind of what your process was for wanting to do that and then getting that off the ground. I I don't know. Hmm. Well, it's, it's been great. Like one of the reasons I love this area and wanted to move back here and have stayed here is how welcoming people have been. Mm-hmm. And like coming to South Dakota songwriter stuff has been awesome. And I love going and I love talking to the guys there. Mm-hmm. But usually it's just guys. Yeah, there is a plethora <laughs> of men. Which is fine. Like I, you know, I enjoy talking. I've met some great guys through it. 
But I was also kind of just like, where are the gals? <laughs> where are they? I know they exist. Right. <laughs> Why aren't they coming? They're here somewhere. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And that's something I've, you know, I've noticed and felt. You know, it's it's a, I don't want to say it's a problem because everyone does their thing. Like, you know, everybody, yeah. you know, if, if you're an artist, you're an artist. If it's their choice to stay away. Right. Absolutely. That's one thing. I mean, I think, I think. You know, I think each side could always do a part to try to bend that bridge. Yeah, absolutely. And, but, you know, it, it was my choice to come every time, too. Mm-hmm. So um, so I think, you know, I, I envision Singing Doe being a platform to educate uh, women who are interested in music from any point, from, like, sound to composing to production to performing – like anything that has to do with music, we can offer education to further that along. Mm-hmm. Um, but also to kind of mend that bridge. Cause um, the thing we decided with performers at Singing Doe is you only have to have a woman identifying person in the band. The rest can be guys. Oh, okay. Cause we, we, you know, we want to be seen as band members, you know, uh, band members, colleagues. Sure. It's not just like, Oh, we can do this on our own. We already know sure. we can do this on our <laughs> own. <laughs> There's the sass. <laughs> we know. We want you guys to know we can yeah. do this and we can work with you on this. So that's that's kind of the thinking behind it. And just kind of giving more opportunity because um it music is so much a who you know scene yeah unfortunately. and so i'm seeing a lot of festivals like small festivals in our area who are booking local musicians and they're great musicians i'm mm-hmm. not going to argue with that but they're primarily all guys from yeah. what i can see sure and the the women musicians are out there why they're not getting connected i don't know but maybe if we have this platform Mm-hmm. That'll start happening. People start to notice them and <laughs> and hear them. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of music is just getting noticed. You know, once mm-hmm. people notice, especially the people that run those events and that, once they hear, even know you exist for one, mm-hmm. uh, then two, then become a fan. It's like mm-hmm. well, then you're on their radar. You mm-hmm. know, and it. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I mean, you have your, you have your, uh, you know, outliers out there that everyone kind of knows, like. Mm-hmm. Most people in the, in the Black Hills area, if you get into music, you know who Jamie Lynn is. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Kim Bachman's been kicking ass oh, lately. Oh gosh, yeah, she's all over the place. Uh-huh. But, um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot uh, that doesn't. Uh, there's a lot that goes unnoticed with it too. And I'd like to say real quick, Elaine Romero Douglas. Oh has yeah, been making a splash lately. Like, she just came out with an album, and I think she'll she'll be making more she's more splashes. A, she's one up. of my she's one of my favorites too. I, I just. Uh, um, I haven't seen her in a while. We were talking about trying to get some rounds set up. Um, I forget the name of that shop. Shavik. Oh I yeah, think. they mm-hmm. have. Apparently, they have a like a. They have a little stage space down in something. the basement. Yeah. yeah, that's super cool. They need. They they were talking about wanting to do, start doing some shows at some that's point. Cool. So that'd be neat. Yeah. Um, do you so, see like the like the uniqueness of that you know men and women can have like. When when guys work together, like they create a certain thing, or when women work together, they create a certain thing. But then when they get together, mm-hmm. just bringing those different viewpoints and different lifestyles and thought processes together mm-hmm. um, creates something completely new. Um, do you like what what value do you see in that? And and have you done that? I guess in your past, like, um, everything. I guess it's it's hard to say because I don't really see that when I'm when I'm collaborating with others, Mm -hmm. like, here's the thing. Like I started a, I co-started a, an event about women in music. But when I look at myself, I see a person, not a woman, you know, like I see another human being and that's how I want others to see me. And I, I, I've had a couple people like when they introduce me for a show, have called me a women's advocate or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. And it made me cringe a like, little bit. When they introduce you just for like a random gig? Yeah. What? And it, it made me cringe a little bit, not because, like I get why they did, because of Singing Doe. This what happened after Singing Doe happened. Okay. Um, But, I mean, the bottom line is, I'm a human, all women are human, and we just want to be, I, I mean, I won't speak for all women, but I think we want to just be seen as human. And while th- this is a women's in music event, like, 
it's just to give a platform to a sect of humans who haven't had that platform ready, readily available to them. Yeah, and and you feel like that's worth that's worth sharing. Yeah. So are- when you ask about collaborating men and women, like I just I just never thought of it that way. Just seeing the differences and how they how those things can kind of work together and everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I to me, it's always just been one person Someone working with another a, person, yeah, that's one true. artist with another artist. So yeah, because I think like I think back to most of the artists that I listen to, like bands that I listen to, it's it's mostly dudes, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 maybe it's just because of my interest in that. But then, like when I find an, an a woman artist that. Like the ones I find that mm-hmm. I, I I adore, like I can listen to them twenty four seven. It's like mm-hmm. holy crap, you know. It's like I don't know how to word it exactly, but um, there's not there's clearly not as many in in my in my music repertoire that I listen to mm-hmm. in a list. It's predominantly um, men. Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, if everyone's just looked at as a human, then maybe it's it's my fault for trying to separate them. So here's the men, and here's the short list of women that I listen to, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I think you like what you like. And, yeah. You know, there's just some things you can't just on a dime be like, okay, I'm suddenly going to like more women artists. <laughs> that's that's just not going to happen. And I'm not saying that needs to happen. I I just I I just think that singing doe needed to happen from an educational standpoint. Sure. But also just like Hey guys, we're here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you know, and I'm and I'm raising two daughters, you mm-hmm. know, and you know that was one of the things. I mean, it was part of singing though that really got me thinking of, man, do I, you know, what, you know, musical influences do they have? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, because they're, um, you know, they listened to, at the time they listened to what I listened to. Now they've gotten to the to the stage where they uh they like their own music and i don't like it anymore it's like oh i don't oh no they they found pop music <laughs> i was trying to hide it from them for so long but have you heard baby shark like oh, 20 times a week oh my god <laughs> oh my god that that song is just it it's, it's haunting like so it, I, I have it to ruins ask. my songwriting time i'll yeah. be sitting there trying to put something <laughs> pops in my head i'm like i'm done gotta walk away Gotta walk away. So I have to ask, is there any, can you name like one pop song you're like, I dig that. It's my guilty pleasure. Like, it doesn't have to be like great songwriting, but I dig that. Yeah. And I don't know if um, dig's a slang term people are still using, but you know what I mean. Um, I mean, I still use the word dig, <laughs> but I'll be 35 in a few weeks. I don't know if, that's, <laughs> if that helps your case at all. <laughs> um, so, like, I grew up, so when I think of pop, Part of a lot of me falls into the pop punk category. Ah, okay. Like, uh, I mean, I put Newfound Glory, Blink One Eighty Two into that category. Um, but so when you're when you're talking, so pop, like top forty. Yeah, it, top oh, forty. So of, okay. Yeah. Um, I really like. Okay. Confession time. Yeah, I know. Here we go. <laughs> Confessions <laughs> at the Heath Bar. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we need a um you can't cut this out <laughs> no this has to stay in this has to stay in so and maybe recently my daughters have been listening to a lot of ariana grande mm-hmm. and she's she's i find myself singing some of her tunes every she now has and some then. catchy tunes yeah and i think that's it the the K- katie perry i get mm-hmm. i get caught up mm-hmm. in some of her tunes too mm-hmm. but that's pop music in general it's mm-hmm. it's designed to be catchy right exactly. so it's hard for me to know like if i actually like it or if it's just why easy to just remember like it? It. <laughs> why can't you just like it like hey this song makes me dance a little bit it's going what's on the, my playlist like what's that's the all tune, the what's the tune um the tune that it was big several years ago, uh, "Call Me Maybe." Yeah. Oh. That song will get in my head, and that's catchy in oh a bad way. Oh <laughs> my god! Like that song, I don't. That's one. Like I don't know if this is enjoyment or just pure torture. Like because I'll be sitting there, it'll 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 come on, and next thing I know, my head's bobbing. I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like, no, I gotta change the music, you know, because it just. You get you get lost because it's so catchy and you just kind of it you run with it. Yeah, you know? that's funny. Um, 
from. But uh, I mean, and and to be fair, I don't, I haven't listened to pop music mm-hmm. like consistently. Yeah, me in either. years. So mm-hmm. I don't know. There might be some out there that hey, that, that's not a bad tune. I more run across uh, pop music if I'm like browsing music videos on YouTube or run across those. I love music videos. I love okay. watching See, music I, videos. I used to, and now I don't. Not so much. Like, I don't really watch them. Like I don't know. I just I don't know if I need to because I like to. Some of them I like to create the stories in my head. Oh, I'm like, okay. what is this? And then if you see a music video, it's like, oh, it's ruined now. <laughs> now I know what the song's about. You know, and it's not. It's it can be about anything. But yeah, you know, yeah, I get it. Funny. I get it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other pop artists. Would you consider Adele a pop artist? Yeah, she's a top forty for mm-hmm. sure. I'm a huge fan of Adele. Okay, like talk about pipes. Solid, oh, solid. Gosh, yep. she's she's a great artist. Um, I don't hate Taylor Swift. <gasps> I know. Oh my! <laughs> like I have like one song of hers I can tolerate. Oh, you don't or like her? Two, I'm not her biggest okay. fan. Okay. Um, but there are like two songs that I'd I'd listen to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I guess part of why I like her was, um, like really it's only the 1989 album, and mm-hmm. that's because Ryan Adams covered every song and made it his own you didn't you, you know this no oh. so on your way home uh <laughs> click go, search for ryan adams uh 1989 okay he completely covered the entire album interesting in his own you know ryan adams style huh but that made me dig the songs so then oh, when i yeah when i hear her songs i'm like oh i, I like these now you know mm-hmm. so i don't know if it's because of her or it's because of ryan adams <laughs> but i mean the fact that ryan adams thought it was of value to cover, it's yeah. like, clearly there's something there, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, she was pretty big before that album even she came was. out. She, she kind absolutely of, was. Yeah, made her mark already, so. Yeah, which but. is, you know, easy to do. And again, who you know. You who know, you know but. and how much money you have. That's just saying. That's true. <laughs> I did buy the fancy water, so. <laughs> <laughs> there's... All my money's gone now because I bought the fancy water. It's gone. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so it, it is funny, though, that when you when you do something like singing dough, mm-hmm. how it, it is very easy to get that label of, oh, they're an advocate for A, B, or C. Like, yeah. I'll go to places and people will be like, oh, he's an, he's an advocate for songwriting, which is... Like, what how 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 do you advocate for that like there's not many people that are trying to denounce songwriting you know or anything yeah. like that so but people like and i'm like no i just kind of like there's way better songwriters around this area than i am you know and it's just a matter of i don't know i just started doing something in yeah that. but is do you find it like is that because it, again it is it's a label that people can put on you because mm-hmm. of something you chose to care about yeah and do yeah and so do you well i kind of had no choice but to care about it in a way okay i'm a musician myself well (laughs) that's that's valid it's yeah i would be like no i don't really care whatever it's just we're all on our own (laughs) um yeah did you find that difficult though like do people like when they talk to you do they do they put that in the back of their head and talk to you as an advocate or do you feel like they talk to you as a person? I haven't noticed. Okay. <laughs> they, that's, that's good. Cause they it's, talk to me like that, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess that could always come up more of like, I mean, I've definitely have had, cause I grew up in a very activism focused family. Sure. So that kind of uh, action and caring (laughs) has always been present in my life. Um, So in a way, a lot of it comes just like it's almost just a knee-jerk reaction to a lot of things like, oh, this is wrong. Got to do something about this. (laughs) And to be honest, I'm I'm getting a little burnt out (laughs) from all of it. (laughs) Sure. Yeah. I can can imagine. (laughs) It's, yeah. Um, Where was I going with that? But- uh, I do. I do worry about like if I continue this, will people only or will they avoid me? 
like they don't want to talk to someone who's uptight about who's like equality in music. I mean, those words have been used with me before. Of, oh, she's uptight. Can't talk about certain subjects around here or like, mm-hmm. um, you know, just they just like pigeonhole you. Like, oh, that's. And then all of a sudden you're in this corner and it's like, that's not. Or you wouldn't be interested in this because you like. Right. Stuff yeah. Like that. yeah. And yeah. I, I don't know. I do not. I don't like that much. Do you think it's just, <laughs> do you think it's just like current climate in, with the world? Like people like are all on eggshells and everything? Or do you think it's don't people know. don't know? I don't just know. Just ignorance. Yes. Just, Maybe it's our own ignorance trying to answer this question, right? <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like there's a lot of potential to have my foot in my mouth at this point. <laughs> or like so, like if I ever do make it big, someone's going to find this podcast and be like, but you said this. <laughs> I'm going to have like a whole Kevin Hart situation on my oh, hands gosh, in t- 10 yeah. years. Um, this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that's so weird. I don't know. Like, I honestly don't even know the whole story because I've neither. actually been trying to stay off social media yeah. and not pay attention to yeah. a lot of things. <laughs> people, people can get mad about anything and everything. I just I don't know. I'm trying to be more aware of what's happening in my more like inner community and what I can do about that at this point. Not that I don't care about like what's happening elsewhere mm-hmm. in the world, but like having grown up in an activism family. I definitely felt like I had to carry so much on my shoulders, and now I'm realizing, oh, that's not possible. So sure, yeah, <laughs> you know? there's only so much one person can do. But but again, there is something one person can do. And oh, everyone well. can do something. Yeah, absolutely. In their own way, I I definitely believe that activism comes in many forms. There is no one way to do it, and if you really care about something, there's a way to be involved. Yeah, like I have yeah. friends that post daily stuff on you know, social media is for activism stuff and that. And I don't think I've post, I post anything. I'm just like, that's not <laughs> my avenue for that. You yeah. know, I just, uh, I, plus I've never seen a, a comment argument go well. Yeah, <laughs> no, it doesn't work very well on Facebook. But, yeah. yeah. Um, but Singing Doe is happening again. It is. Uh, what's the date for that this year? March 8th and 9th. Sweet. We've expanded. Ooh, what's that mean? So we've added... We're having our regular showcase on Saturday night and mm-hmm. workshops during the day. We've added two new workshops. We're doing a songwriter's workshop early in the morning with myself. Sweet. Leading that one. And then followed by a workshop with um, – so we have someone from the State Revenue Department coming and explaining the current South Dakota tax laws that perform that pertain to performers. Interesting. And we will also have a couple of local kind of successful musicians talking about their experience in organizing finances and um, how That's they dealt with that. That's awesome. That's yeah. a hard thing to do. It is. And I, <laughs> I've learned so much about it this oh, last year. <laughs> like I, I'm sure there's, there's things I'm missing out on just because I don't know all the rules and I just do the basics and i know that it, i know Maybe. that it's illegal but i'm like God, what if could i have written that off i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so you know maybe that's something south dakota songwriters should look into is that's offering a, a workshop a really like idea. that um so we're adding two new workshops and then friday nights and we, last year we had kind of like a, a light brunch networking thing yeah yeah and we decided that didn't work very well so instead we're doing an open mic friday night at the doll we're partnering with emerging artists Mm -hmm. um so we'll have open mic and then we'll do like an informal networking gathering at a local bar which is still to be determined sweet so (laughs) that's super cool yeah um and then oh i had a question i was gonna ask you about that um ah, it'll probably come to me later (laughs) as soon as i hit end on the recording i'm sure it will that's always how it works um so March eighth and ninth. Yep. And uh, is the is the showcase going to be at Harriet Oak again? It is. Okay. Yep. That's a cool place. We're uh, workshops at Racing Magpie Showcase at Harriet Oak. We're really happy to be back there. It was a really great experience, um, and they're really nice to offer their their space to us. Yeah, that's super cool of them. Um, so do you you make a living just doing art stuff, right? Like independent art artistry. Yes. Yeah. So the, and it's and it includes the filming, the music. Mm-hmm. The, I don't know everything. if you'd call it a living, more like well. like saved up in the buckets and kind of disperse that in the bills where they need to go. But you're yeah. able to buy food at least. <laughs> you're still alive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, uh, that I can't imagine. Like I've 
I tried to do that for a while, but even then I bartended a few a few mm-hmm. times a week just to, you know, yeah. pay the bills and that. So that's not especially in, in a in a place like this, it's not an easy task. Yeah. So it it came about very weirdly and oddly. Um if I don't have time to tell this story. Yeah, absolutely. But so Coming out of college in Milwaukee, I went to the Pine Ridge Reservation for my first year of volunteering um, at Red Cloud Indian School. Mm-hmm. And while I was, I, I went there to be a full time substitute teacher in the high school. Um, but uh, there were days when no one needed a substitute, so I would make videos. And um, at the end of the year, a few people asked if I would make some videos for some end of the year stuff. So I did that. And it was from that experience. After the year, I did move to D.C., so I wasn't there for very long. But okay. um, after that experience, uh, a guy I worked with there, I ran into him at, when I came back to visit Pine Ridge for a graduation. And I ran into him at a gas station. He's like, oh, yeah, you made videos. We might have a job for you. And it took like another year before I heard from him. But it was from that volunteer experience that I got a long-term contract creating um, Lakota language videos for kids. Oh, sweet. So I've been doing that. I just passed my four-year anniversary doing that for them. And that's what kind of started me. And it it was lucky in the sense that that's what's kept me stable and Mm -hmm. at least able to put food on the yeah, table yeah and i'm just now getting to the point where i'm getting other contracts to actually kind of you know more than just food on the table that's, that's cool man i didn't i don't think i knew that that's the videos that you were doing yep that's awesome four years four years and it's just is it um just teaching them about their language it's like sesame street but in lakota oh sweet. so it's just basic like like regular curriculum you'd see in any classroom, but just in the Lakota language. And uh, like, is it all on online? Like it a is. YouTube channel? It's on and YouTube. Okay. Anyone can view it. Uh, it's called Waiowa Chikala, which... Uh, I'll have to put a link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even now trying to spell it in my head and it would take a minute yeah, for me to... Yeah. yeah. But, we'll link um, to it. That'll be, okay. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, so four years doing that. Mm-hmm. And then also playing music. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Anything else that I'm missing? Well, I'll just say uh, the documentary just won an award, which I'm very excited about. We what award? Best documentary short for this one festival um, oh, that we submitted sweet. it to. Congratulations. Thank you. So very excited about that. We have the film in many other festivals, um, so hopefully hear back wow. on those in the next few months. and. Crossing fingers. Yeah, it's cool when you do something and it, it gets recognized like that. And people yeah. are like, hey, this is this is good work. It's definitely good better for business. Like hey. that's that's true. <laughs> By the way, here's my card. <laughs> you too can be on film. <laughs> no, I'm just yes. kidding. That's cool. Uh where can people find all your stuff? Like your music, um, all the different things you've got going on. What's the So I've been trying to ramp up my Instagram. Ooh, uh, okay game and uh if you look up anna robbins official i've i've just kind of meld all my film like music film it's all just one artist now so whether you follow me on facebook or instagram like i post about all those things now okay um it was just too much trying to yeah keep it all all separate separate. i've been debating the same thing myself (laughs) like six pages i run i'm like yeah so if you uh, look me up on Anna Robbins on Instagram or Facebook. I'll be there and post pretty regularly regularly on Instagram now and Facebook kind of through that. Um, I also have websites, AnnaRobbins.com or DrumSongMedia.com, which is kind of my studio name and what okay. I do the videos under. But Sweet. Yeah. That's super and cool. And you can, Singing Doe has a website, SingingDoe.com. Sweet. So yeah, okay. all you can there's. Yeah. I'll link to all of it. people. <laughs> people find it. There'll be links to all of this. All of this. I have a lot of projects, but luckily folks. they all have links in kind of one location. Yeah. You just go the, there, and then you'll see them. <laughs> That's super cool. That's um, just uh, just yesterday. Whoever had uh, at Heath Johnson on Twitter. Let it lapse or changed. Oh, nice. So I grabbed it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> finally. Finally on Twitter, I'm just, it's just my name. And that's, I never realized. I like, exist. Oh, God. It's such a, 
like I felt so good. I'm like, this is this is huge. And like it's not, <laughs> but I'm like, oh man, like that's so nice to say. No, it's just my name at Twitter, mm-hmm. you know. And what was it before? So everything else is uh, at Heath Bar Online. Oh, okay. Because that's the you know the web my website is gotcha. you know everything. And so I was like, oh maybe it's just keep it on one username. But I'm trying to slowly get everything to be as simple as possible. Mm-hmm. So it, it'll all I feel like it used to be that it was harder for people to grasp that, oh, you're a filmmaker and a musician. Like those don't, you know. Mm-hmm. But now, especially in the era of YouTube, where creators are just doing random stuff mm-hmm. and so much different random stuff, like it's easier for people to grasp, okay, you're you're an artist, you're, you're a creator. Yeah. That term I see being used a lot is just you're a creator. Right, yeah. And this is what you create. Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, and then there's there's avenues for that. Like you've you've also got Patreon. I noticed you're starting that. Just up. Just started that. Yeah, I've, yep. I've been trying to do that for a while. Um, it's I don't know. I'm just curious. It's <laughs> it's a good experiment just to see. Yeah. you know, if it works. It certainly not, doesn't so. hurt to have it out there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah. Well, thanks for being at the thank Heath you Bar, for Anna. having this me. This was a ton of fun. <laughs> um, we almost finished our water. So Speak we'll. Uh, mm. t- oh, there it goes, and it's gone. Mm-hmm. See, you'd be a great beer drinker. I'm just, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I once uh, tried to chug a soda for a game because I couldn't drink beer. That uh-huh. didn't work very well. <laughs> yeah. It's the carbonation. I don't like it. Well, thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. That's a wrap, everyone. Once again, if you want to get a hold of me in any way, shape, or form, the best way to do that is emailing me at heath at heathbaronline.com or follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram, at Heath Bar Online, or on Twitter, at Heath Johnson. We'll see you all next time, folks.